as I sit here right now, these are the best clincher tyres money can buy for performance, aesthetic and durability. I'll put that right at the beginning of the video. So roll the, roll the intro. Doing, lads? That's the way the boys. They're going the wrong way. Vincent 10. You guys will no doubt end up doing exactly what I did, which is check out some of the online reviews. You'll no doubt end up on the GCN video. You'll no doubt end up on the press release video. Bike Radar probably did a review. A lot of it's just reading off the press release. I hate to say. Not that this is going to be particularly awe inspiring, but what I did think is we'll open it over to you guys. So we popped up on Instagram the other day and we said, look, we've got these tires. What do you guys want to know? What do you want to know? Comparisons. Like, okay, you want the 4,000 compared to the 5,000. So I'm racking my brain, right? I'm racking my brain as to how to do this. But I think I've got a couple of ideas. Okay, JC, talk about these 4,000s. What do you love about them? Oh, oh dear, death. Oh. hang on, death. That's where I died 12 months ago, just there. If you go on bicyclerollingresistance.com and you, you can look up the drag of all the tires and they're up there. So they're a proper race tire. They're up there with the Conti, sorry, with the Vittorias and all them. They have good puncture resistance and they have good grip and they're not that expensive. So they pretty much do it all. So why are they the best? They have heaps of grip, they feel fast and they don't get punches. TP4s. Why? because they're the business. I honestly think the 5,000's biggest problem here going in is gonna be how good the 4,000's were. Well, there's just not, there's not really anything to fix because yeah. they're just the best tyres. So we're gonna go to Heffron tonight, guys. I've done 7,000 million laps of Heffron, unsuccessful laps of Heffron, and quite a few of them on 4,000's. If there's ever a place to test just how well it handles really poor conditions, Heffron's your place. So yeah, it's a terrible track, this is Heffron, but what I'm interested in is that corner, right? So when we hit that corner at 45, 50 k's an hour coming around that corner, you can hear me, right? It is bumpy as. I always kind of use it as the traction, the ride quality test, I reckon that corner, because you're always super fatigued. It's almost where, hey mate, it's almost where the equipment has to take over, I reckon. But before that, I want to ask a lot of people what tires they're running. Victoria Corsa Control G Plus. Pirelli. Pirelli's? Alright. Got some uh, lovely 28s, uh, courtesy of Maxis. Change from my normal Contis. Tyres you're running? Um, Schwalbe's. Whoa! Fan of the Conti GP4000, so I'm now going to upgrade to the 5000s. But I'm waiting to hear some reviews on them. GP5000s, what would you like to see upgraded? More puncture protection. Okay. Easily. Pro protection over performance? Well, have you been on Heffron? No. That thing is a goat track. Uh, I'm gonna go race now. We're gonna go race. He'll, he'll go with his hands in the air for I won a charity oh, race. I'm not, I'm not even a race. I'm getting a deuce behind me. Yeah. <laughs>
guys. Literally just swung off. Set. Trying to brought Chris up there. You'll catch it hopefully on the rear camera. Guys, I'll be honest. First thought straight away after Heffron. I've never felt so smooth here. That was unbelievable. My God, these are beautiful. Oh, yes! Ah, yes! Oh, mate. Nero, KOM, financialadvice.com.au, Chris! How? Ladies and gentlemen, please join with me in congratulating Week 10's champion, Jack. Back to your usual spot, second place. Oh, that feels yeah. good. As you're watching this as a tyre review, but as a nice little side story there. So uh, that's our first win at Heffron on Tuesday night this year. So really, really cool. I was a bit worried going in because I realised the last three races that I'd done at Heffron, two races, two races I'd done at Heffron, I'd actually been running tubulars just because the amount of racing I've been doing. So, so I was a bit worried that my initial thoughts would be, oh, these aren't as good as the race. Didn't find that, which was, which was interesting. I also noticed this evening, and this is probably not particularly scientific, but I will say it, that's the lowest power I've done at Heffron for almost two years. And I think if you ask anyone else in that race there tonight, I was pretty much standard Chris. Uh, swapped off for the race, did a lead out and swung off. Standard Chris. The other thing from tonight is, look, I asked a lot of people about their tyres, tyres they ran, and their thoughts on the 4000s. Most people have run 4000s, so they've got an opinion on them and maybe then what they expected from the 5000s. My thoughts so far, I like. Okay, phase two of our little tire test. It's gonna be a little different today. Uh, we're gonna look more at durability, okay? So from that you got to probably kind of conclude that the performance is, is very good But then performance well, it's twofold isn't it because you know It's all good and well to have great performing tires, but if you're fixing a flat every 12 minutes, then what's the point? So I was thinking how to do this Because obviously we'll do a long-term one, but how to do it in the relative short term Guys, behind me is what I effectively think is the worst and the worst tire zone I could find. It's actually the only place that I've ever had to make the call. It ended up being a call to an Uber and I just jumped in it, but double flatted, it's terrible, right? Shoulder of the M2. What I'm gonna do is three runs, uh, up, back, up, and the rest. And then we're gonna head home. I'm gonna have a look at the tires, kind of see how they're cut up, see what effect this has had on them. I, I, can, I can't stress to you enough, guys, how bad this, this is for tyres. Quick shout out to the person who is going to be blocked on Instagram who requested that we test these tyres in wet weather. I thought, <laughs> no chance, buddy. So you could get a double whammy here. Anyway, right on, let's go. People have written books, some have a great look that covers the magazines for kids who are 17, but I don't know what... Well guys, that was truly horrible. I'm not going to lie to you. The things I do. So we'll get home, we'll have a look at how that's cut the tyres up. But before we do, I kind of thought we might have a little chat about the aesthetic of these tyres because, well, that's really all I care about is what stuff looks like. Not how it performs. And yeah, I think these look pretty cool. I think the graphic update is really nice. It's a little bit Pirelli-esque, italic-y kind of profiled font, um, but it's it's not too bold and in your face, which is quite nice. It's quite subtle, actually. Now, guys, mounting these up, which I think is probably more important than anything else, 
I remember it was like the one reason I hated the Michelin tyres initially. So I couldn't get them on the friggin' bike. I would say like Victoria courses are like 9 or 10 out of 10 just because like they're so malleable. They're just super, super easy to get on your bike. So let's say they're 9 out of 10. I would have said the 4000s normally like 7. Pretty easy but that last little bit you can sometimes pinch. These I'd say are easier. Now, the reason I reckon these are slightly easier is just the rubber's a bit more malleable. So you can kind of almost grip it better, if that makes sense. Um, which just makes that last little oomph that little bit easier. I so I just sort of gave him a little bit of a squeeze there on the way back. It's just drizzling a bit and kind of greasy. So I can confirm if you're after commuter cups, these could be the tyres for you. Very nice, very good. Which is sort of a problem because <laughs> I really like these tyres. I was hoping to find something, but look guys, assuming we don't get home and discover they're ripped to shreds or assuming in three weeks time I don't put an Instagram post up that basically says they've fallen apart, they're really good. So we'll get home, we'll check them out and we'll do a conclusion, hey? Okay, okay guys, um, full disclosure, now is not straight after that ride. I've done two more rides on it, probably bringing the total up to just over about a thousand Ks on the bike. And that's not a long-term tire review, I totally understand that, but guys, there is no marks on these tires. Plane flying above, but there's no marks on these tires. As I sit here right now, I can 100% tell you that there is no obvious puncture issues with the tyres and durability looks supreme. I think they look awesome. I think the tyres look beautiful on tyres. I'm a massive fan of gun walls, as you know. This would move me back to the black. In fact, that would be my one. Conti, do gun walls. But you know what I mean? Like as far as black tyres go, this is the right mix of kind of stealthy without looking clunky. That was always my one gripe with the 4000s aesthetic was they just had that utilitarian brutality. Yes, they worked and they were fast, but I'm all about looks. And they just didn't look cool. These have kind of bridged that gap for me. Two other things I do want to mention. So the, the rim profile, I mentioned this out on the bike. For me, running the C24s, um, guys running like a fulcrum, fulcrum wheel, like that slightly narrower profile. It's not narrower really, but a narrower profile. I really think these tyres suit that rim. Look, if you're running like the Zips or even like the Envies, because of that, that real bulgy sort of wheel, maybe not as much benefit to, to, the, to that rim with these tyres. That, that's possible. The other thing is weight. So I weighed these tyres individually. Um, they came in pretty much around 220 grams, which is really light. That is really light. So that's sort of, I think, in line with like the Pirellis and my criticism of the Pirellis had always just been the puncture protection. Once they go, they're gone. So, you know, they're the two things I wanted to say. So the elephant in the room here, guys, is price. So I had a quick look and so 99 bikes have them for about 86. Whereas, you guys want comparisons, well, Bike Park have them at about 52 and like it's a damn good price and as you guys know you can probably get the bundle type thing for almost under 100 bucks for a front and a rear tyre. So at this stage right now as we sit here we're looking at you know just under double for this tyre. Is it worth that? Well I can tell you this that there is definitely a performance gain to these tyres, whether it be subconsciously or physically out on the road, there is a percentage increase of your performance on this tyre. It's not gonna win you a race, but there is an increase. Aesthetically, for me, if you're just simply comparing the 4000s and the 5000s, there is definitely a benefit to 
to 5000s. I prefer the aesthetic. Puncture protection, I never had problems with 4000s, haven't had any problems with 5000s. So jury is still out or in? Jury's out. Is that worth double? Well, that's up to you guys, I'm sorry. Um, I don't need to be that guy. They're just in great condition. Guys, uh, I did mention in the beginning that I've been loaned these tires. I ain't giving them back. So, fire me more questions as to the type of thing you want to see. I will try and incorporate it into upcoming videos because I do want to kind of make this obviously a long-term thing and we'll do a, a proper long-term. I reckon normally sort of around the 3,000, 4,000 K mark would be a good sort of proper update around there. Ah, I do have a conclusion to this. On this cold December day, we are on our merry way. Singing a song, barreling through the snow. Bells are jingling, snowflakes tingling. Rudolph knows where to go. On this cold December day.